Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Our weekly look behind the scenes of Golden Eagle basketball in our first show of the year. And, uh, Doc, it's been, uh, it's been a good season so far for the Golden Eagles, although you spent most of it on the road. The last couple of weeks, the Golden Eagles have been on the road. It'll be about 30 days between home games at Regan Green Coliseum. You know, John, I don't know that I've ever been through a, a, a season like we've been through this year. And, you know, we have had some good games. Uh, we had about uh, a three-game stretch where I didn't think we played well at all after getting off to a good start. And then we came back and went on the road again and, uh, you know, played some very good basketball teams. And, and I thought that we competed and played with a lot of enthusiasm and, and had chances to win uh, some of those games that was on the road at Wichita State and Kansas State, but it came up short. But then also thought that we went to South Dakota and, you know, in a very tough situation after being on the road as long as we had and, and a good bus ride up there and uh, not playing very well uh, the first half and, and needing, to, needing to win that basketball game because, uh, you know, you just didn't want to go into the Christmas holidays on a three-game losing streak. Uh, in the second half, I thought we showed about as much toughness as any team that we've had since I've been here. And then we had a couple of guys, Kevin and... Uh, and Drain hit a couple three-point shots that gave us an opportunity to win the game. And like I said, the defense the last few minutes, uh, you know, really, really competed and, and got some stops and got uh, got the defensive rebound with those two big three-point shots made. Uh, we were able to get away with a win. Then uh, obviously took the holidays off and then come back and started getting ready for the conference. It was a, uh, a trip early where you won a couple of road games, one at SMU, that was a big win out in Dallas, and then one at uh, Troy. So uh, some, some good road wins, including that one you mentioned about South Dakota. No question about it. And, uh, you know, going on the road, especially with a senior team, was a little bit different than uh, we've experienced in the last few years. And, you know, obviously, uh, in my opinion, went in there with some confidence. And, and I, I went into the game, uh, especially SMU, knowing if we did shoot the basketball really well, we'd have a chance. Uh, we came away. and. And we did. Uh, we, I think we made 14 threes and then went to Troy and continued to shoot the ball really well. Unfortunately, uh, you know, since that time, we've not shot it as well as we did those two ball games. And it's not that we're not doing anything different. It's just that the basketball's not going through uh, from the three-point line. And this team's going to have to to make some three-pointers. And at the same time, we're also going to have to make our free throws. And you know, we got off to a slow start last year at the free throw line, but finished really, really strong. So hopefully in conference uh, we'll be able to do that again because we're, we have got to be able to get some free points, and those free points have got to come from the free throw line. I know you talked about, uh, of course, the Eagles were at Louisiana Tech the other afternoon and uh, lost a tough one in the conference USA opener. But it's, it's a ball club that has had some good things, as you said, and, and struggled at times. What do you like, though, about this basketball team? Well, I think when we, when we play with the enthusiasm and energy, this team's got a chance to be a really good basketball team. But for whatever reason, we've struggled with that in three or four ball games just – understanding the sense of urgency and more importantly for the five seniors I've expressed to them you know this is it for you guys so you might you, you better enjoy every moment that you're out there uh, don't take anything for granted and, uh, and and at the same time go out there and play with a lot of confidence because the bottom line is after this season it's over for you guys and uh, the thing that's been frustrating uh, as you mentioned the Louisiana Tech game I didn't feel like uh, for the first conference game, um, I didn't think we was uh, playing with any kind of passion at all, and, and that's that was disappointing. Um, and, and at the same time, uh, you know, as I told the team afterwards after talking to them, is the league is 18 games. We obviously didn't play very good in that first one, so uh, we need to we need to figure out that for this team to be successful. Uh, we've got to exceed all energy and enthusiasm, at least meet the other teams. So the Golden Eagles now are getting ready for the Conference USA season. Doc will rejoin us in just a bit, and we'll talk about what's coming up for the Golden Eagles. But sit back now and enjoy our features coming up now on Southern Miss Sports Today. Uh, what's going through my mind right now is just Trying to trying to win a conference championship. I mean, I've been here long enough to to through the ups and downs, and and right now there's a lot of positivity uh, going around with this team. So I'm not really focused on what I'm trying to do after right now, but I know I have one goal in mind. I think it's the same goal that everybody else on the team has. 
I did mess around with some other sports. Uh, I played baseball all the way up until machine pitch, and the only reason why I stopped that was because my older brother stopped playing, but he was five years old and he, he was done with it. Uh, I got a chance to play football for one year, um, undefeated, couldn't really catch, uh, couldn't really deal with the, uh, the handoffs as a running back, so they put me at tight end, but as long as you're undefeated and win the championship, I feel like I was successful as a football player, but at, at some point I realized that all these other sports are taken away from what I really want to do. And when you're out there on the football field, you can't be on the basketball court. So uh, that's just decided. That's how I decided. And uh, I knew my dad could help me more with basketball because that's where he was around. So that's what I made my final decision with. I mean, I've known Coach Salad for a long time. I think one thing that uh, most people don't know is that he really looks out for the people. Um, who, who played for him and worked for him. I mean, is a prime example with uh, uh, Omar Thomas joining the staff. He was there at UTEP, uh, and I got to see him play his senior year. And uh, for him to bring him back and uh, as a director of basketball operations, I know that uh, Coach Sadler is somebody I can always look to if I want to get into um, the basketball coaching field or director of uh, basketball operations that if I want to, if I want to move forward, then he would probably be one of the first people that I call besides my dad. I think what I enjoy most about being a part of a team is, is that you, you get to learn people and uh, just being around them, you understand what they like to do and different things and all that transfers over from when you're at home to when you're on the court, you just, you, you kind of start realizing what different people are thinking before they before they even do it. I mean, I get a lot of satisfaction out of, out of being here through all the different years and, and seeing different things happen. But um, I mean, I take pride in it. Um, I mean, you always have people in your ear saying what you, what you need to do, what you should be doing, or where you should go, or where you shouldn't be. But I felt like if I, if I waited out long enough that it was going to head in the right direction. And it's always been like that for me. Uh, everybody reaches their tough patches. And, and for me to be a starter since the end of my freshman year, that's, that's kind of hard to turn down. And you just you expect the team to get better when you're here. Uh, well, right now, I'm finishing up my master's in uh, sport management. Uh, I've kind of started looking into um, doing some front office type of work, um, um, athletic director, associate athletic director stuff, and working for the NCAA. But uh, that's just kind of my first plan. I know basketball is always going to be there, and I'm going to want to get back around it. But I think I need to explore more and, and figure out what I really like. Because I know I love basketball, and I know that that's something I'm always going to want to do. But I've never really got a chance to experience anything else, and that's kind of something that I want to experiment with and and like we talked about I can always call coach Sattler later and and try to get back into basketball. For me wearing the black and gold it, it's it's about loyalty and um, I mean we just talked about it I've been here for five years and I wanted to be here I wanted to play for Southern Miss I wanted to be a division one basketball player and I don't think I, if I had to look back I wouldn't have made a different decision. My mom and dad were athletic. My dad played football in college and my mom played softball and we always played basketball out on the pavement. So that just that just made sense. I was that kid that wanted to show you how many push-ups I can do at like five and I could out outdo you. You know, I was that, that kid. And so basketball was just, it, it was my speed. I tried volleyball. I played it all the way to high school. Um, tried softball, wasn't good at that. Um, but yeah, I liked basketball, stuck with it. I have such a great community here, um, and I didn't know that my first decision, obviously, but I felt that, you know, and I decided because I felt like if for some crazy reason I couldn't play basketball, I would still enjoy my experience here. Um, 
and that's been the case. I've got to see both sides of that. And honestly, even when I go home, which is Slidell, I'm thinking about Hattiesburg because I have so many great people here surrounding me. So that's a big reason why I chose Southern Miss. I mean, I came in as a captain my freshman year. I don't know how in the heck that happened to begin with. But I've been somewhat in a leadership role since I got here. Um, but I can say that this year has challenged me to to just do more and to see it from a different perspective. And um, yeah, and t really just to learn what kind of leader I am. You know, it's, it's different for everybody. I can't lead like Brittany Dinkins, which was a great leader, but I can lead like Megan Brown. And I'm learning, I'm learning every day what that looks like for me and really being challenged by Coach Manelis to <laughs> get the best out of me. Yeah. Coach read us a quote yesterday and I may mess it up, but it's something like, don't focus on how you fell, but focus on where you slipped. And for our team, I think that's important. I think we are very much still, we're young, and we sometimes see the result of a thing, or, and we don't focus on the process. And I think if we can buy into practice and doing, you know, paying attention to the details and practice and just making each other better there, um, we will have great success. And so that's what I think our team, just consistency in that. You know, we'll get up for a big game and, and knock off to a game we should win, you know? And so I think that consistency is found in practice. I think part of maturity too is learning how to say no. <laughs> because my first couple years, I was in everything. Leading, helping lead FCA, involved in my church, um, and SAC, a student program here, student athlete advisory committee. Um, and those things were great. Um, but I've kind of, I've kind of cut the strings to a lot of those things. Not because I wanted to. I love being involved. I love being a part of those communities. Um, but just because I realized this is the purpose place that I'm in, and this is a lot of time invested. And so, honestly, I'm not involved in much of in much of those things right now, uh, just because I really want to be work effectively in one place, and I think that's working a lot better for me. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, it does matter because I hate losing, but let's say after a game we don't play well, even when we may lose, it makes a bigger impact to me personally that a young girl comes up to me after the game. It's like, hey, can I talk to you? Or she's super excited and says, oh, you played well. And I'm thinking, I was a one for nine, you know? Like that makes a bigger impact to me than, than the result of a game. And I've learned that over the years. And, and our team has done a lot, Coach McNellis, um, definitely pushes that. Um, our month of October is community service. We go to local schools um, throughout the community. Uh, we go to our Dubard School Center here, um, our learning center, and we just get to interact with the community and honestly get to focus on something other than basketball for a while. And remember, it's so much bigger than just what we're doing on the court. And that's, that's fun. That's the fun part for me. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and authentic. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we're doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. Basically, the reason why I got the Bullfrog nickname was when I was a student manager for Doc. I remember one day, it just it was out of the blue. I walked into the office, Doc was in his office, um, and, and it was one of the weirdest things. Doc doesn't usually listen to music in his office. It may have been a commercial or whatever, but all I know is I walked by his office, and uh, 
and for some reason that Jeremiah was a bullfrog song was on this TV radio something and as I'm walking down the hallway I'm the only one there and then I hear from down the other end of the hallway Doc yelling bullfrog and I knew that since I was the only one there he was asking for me so once I went down there and and talk to him, that name stuck with me ever since. I've been here at Southern Miss for about five years. I've been here since 2013 as a student. I graduated in May of 2017 with my bachelor's degree in sport management. And, and I was a student manager for DOC my last two years. I graduated um, and I got to work with Patrick Stewart last year with the equipment staff as a GA and I stayed close with Doc in the program and he hired me back for this year for my second year as a GA and I'll be graduating in May of 2019 and everything's been fun about about what I do I just love Southern Miss, bleed black and gold have the most pride you could have I think for Southern Miss and, and myself and you know everything I do for the campus, the university, for the people here is is fun for me and you know, ultimate goal for me is you know to continue to work for Southern Miss and hopefully stay on as long as I can here in any capacity. And I would say if 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 I got the chance to move up, maybe my aspirations would be to be a uh, director of basketball operations and uh, maybe work in a front office one day. You know, being from Harrison, Ohio, which is about 18 miles northwest of Cincinnati. You know, I ended up down here mainly in part through the academic scholarships. Um, out of high school, I was able and, and fortunate enough to get academic scholarships to attend Southern Miss. And you know, my passion and love for Southern Miss began as a kid watching Brett Favre, you know, with the Green Bay Packers and just knowing, knowing stuff about him, I knew that he went to Southern Miss and visiting family and friends around this area. You know, we would always come down 49 and go past a rock on our way to pedal. And I would just, you know, just kind of picture myself being here one day. And, you know, it just worked out to where I got some academic scholarships to come down here. And, you know, went from there, was a student for two years. And then I told myself I want to do something bigger. So I came over to the basketball program and they hired me on as a student manager and I just ran with it. And that's why I'm here today. To wear the black and gold is is a tremendous honor in my opinion, you know. Coming here as a student, you know, as a fan, just knowing that I'm a part of this university, having graduated, having worked for men's basketball and different areas, it, it means a lot to me to be able to put this on and go home and walk around in Ohio and people ask me, oh, Southern Miss, you know, and I get to tell them about my experience and explain to them what we're about. And most of the time they know who we are from back in the old days. So, you know, just being able to wear the black and gold every day is, ama is an amazing feeling to be, on to be honest with you because I have great pride about this university. I just love it. A faculty member on campus in kinesiology and my academic background is sports psychology. So um, former collegiate athlete and a former collegiate coach um, as is Lauren and so um, I think that you know both of us have a real heart and passion for student athletes and the experience that college athletics can be for student athletes and that's not just the experience they get on the athletic field but also the experience off the field. Um, and so our unit, Student Athlete Development, is really about developing them for all of the skills that they're going to need to be successful in life. And um, so I use a lot of my um, academic training in sports psychology in our work with our student athletes. Um, and I think it's been a, a really great opportunity um, you know, for me, especially, to work with our athletes on campus. I think uh the department of the university and, and the athletic department have decided this more important because they see the demands on the student athletes um, and you see uh, the staffing meet those needs as we've progressed over the decades of, of student athletes and their development 
um, the academic support, that has certainly increased over the years. They see, man, these kids have so much to do. They have a full-time school load. They're essentially a full-time job as student athletes. Um, and they're busy doing school, athletics, school athletics, that they do sometimes get, you know, miss that piece, that extra stuff that, you know, how do I balance my budget? How do I stop a minute and breathe? Um, that student athlete wellness piece. And I feel like colleges and just the kids as well in general are realizing I need this and so they've provided support for that. I think that that when you look at the athlete experience every unit in the athletic department plays a role in athlete success and so um, student athlete development interacts with academics in that we're, we're teaching them some skills on stress management, time management, you know all of those elements um, and we interact with our athletic training staff, we're working with things like recovery, um, return from play after injury. And so I, I think that um, what student athlete development allows us to do is that we're able to interact with our student athletes at a very personal level and help them fill in any gaps they might be missing in what they're getting in any of those other areas in the athletic department. Yeah, there was, there was a, a bit of hesitation at first uh, when I got here, not so much in uh, the programming itself, but, you know, time demands, who, who are you, what, what do you want from me in some aspect, and I think that's one thing that's really cool about what we do is we don't, we don't want anything from you. We have no agenda other than to help you, um, but as we've gone on um, and developed the program over the past, you know, I guess, year and a half now, um, we've been able to specialize our programming. Whereas we used to you know, take these broad strokes and have a program with a particular topic and try to get all the student athletes or as many as possible at that particular program. And it just doesn't meet their, their, their needs in terms of time and scheduling and just all that. So we've taken an approach to where we target team by team um, and are able to get you know, that team. What, what do they need? What do their coaches and what do you know, those players think that they need um, and are able to help them in that way? So I think in in developing and changing our approach, we've, we've created some trust and, and some more buy-in as well. Well, hope you enjoyed our features this week on Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler. And uh, Doc, we also saw a feature on uh, Jeremy DeColvey. He's a graduate assistant for you, a guy who began his career as a manager. And uh, talk about a, a jack of all trades. He does a little bit of everything for basketball. Well, Jeremy, as we know him as Bullfrog, uh, you know, John, I could never remember his name uh, when he first came here. And I called him Je uh, Jeremiah. Yeah. And so finally one day I just said, hey, I can't get your name right. So. I remember the old song back when we were uh, in school, Jeremiah was a bullfrog, so I just started calling him bullfrog, but he's a guy that uh, brings uh, an unbelievable work ethic, uh, is a guy that really cares a lot about Southern Miss, wants to do the things that uh, need to be done, and he wants to do them right, and uh, he's been a positive uh, influence on on everybody that's around here. Well, as we do the show now, uh, we just finished a game with Rice. That was an early game uh, earlier today, the Golden Eagles and Rice, and now Eagles are on their way to North Texas to take on the, the Mean Green. And uh, Mean Green, North Texas looks like, well, they've got a lot of firepower. I think they're 13-1, and one, something like that already this year. Well, they return a lot of players, and uh, as you said, uh, you know, there's a lot of question on whether or not you uh, do the postseason plays that's not really involved in the NIT or the NCAA tournament, but they made a decision last year with the losing record to uh, to go ahead and play in a, a postseason tournament and, uh, you know, and had some success and ended up winning the tournament. I'm not for sure which one, the CIT or CAT, whichever one, CBI, whatever it was, but that carried on to some confidence. And then they had a summer tour this year that, uh, you know, gave them some more experience and they've just carried that over and Grant's done a great job down there. And one of my former assistants, Dream Dowling, who did an outstanding job here uh, for me is uh, on his staff. And uh, the bottom line is they've got a very, very good basketball team and it's going to be a challenge for us Saturday to go up there and, uh, and just get it to the last five minutes as we talk about on the road, you know, get to the last five minutes, have a chance to win, play good defense, no, no second shots or transition, and make a couple in those last five minutes, and you're going to win the ball game. And finally, the next week, the Golden Eagles are finally back home again at Regrain Coliseum, but two tough ones, Middle Tennessee and UAB. Well, uh, over the last five years, it's probably two of the best teams that's been in this league. And 
Uh, like you say, it's been forever since we've been at home, and uh, you know it's going to be like just starting a whole new season over. So I hope people come out and watch. These, uh, these five seniors have been through a lot. They've given everything. They've had opportunities to leave and stuck with it. Uh, through the tough times and you know I would hope that our fans would appreciate uh, you know the efforts that they've put forth and at the same time I think we got a pretty good basketball team so uh, get, come out and uh, hopefully uh, help us win some games and for us to have a chance to win as you well know uh, you can't lose at home in conference play and hopefully uh, you know our fans can be the difference in that area. All right Doc thanks as always for the visit and we'll see you next week. Hey John appreciate it. All right Coach Doc Sadler and the Golden Eagles at North Texas Texas over the weekend and then the Golden Eagles finally back home at Reed Green Coliseum for Middle Tennessee and UAB. Don't forget on Mondays we're at Georgia Blue in Hattiesburg for the Golden Eagle Hotline with Coach Doc Sadler. Come on by, visit with us. We'll talk a little Golden Eagle basketball. That'll do it this week. Have a great week, everybody. See you next time. Another inside look into Southern Miss basketball. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and uplifting. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we are doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, Mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.